I worked most of my life as an outdoor educator, teaching university students. I started that with secondary students, but spent, I suppose, 25 years working with university students. And you ended up with an annual cycle of trips or an annual calendar of trips. And Bear Gully was on that calendar, two or three trips a year. And I just loved looking forward to coming down here knowing you'd have the sound of the sea and running activities with students getting them getting them into understanding the place and enjoying being here celebrating being on the australian coastline now i've come down here to do some filming and writing and thinking and going for a few bike rides and a paddle it's just an absolutely magical place Just this little clearing here. I mean, it's such a nondescript little clearing that the parks have put in. But I, uh, I nicknamed it, or I called it the veranda, after a R.F. Brissenden poem. And uh, Drew's book, The Coast Dwellers, he talks about Australian people being veranda dwellers. You know, sitting here on the edge of things, looking out. And this was just the epicenter of activity. You know, we'd be camped up there in the tea tree. And we'd say, we'll see you. We'll see you down on the veranda. You know, bring all your stuff down. We'll meet at the veranda in five minutes and get into the next activity. You know, I've read books to students <laughs> under the trees over there and had dinner and played games over there and run ecology sessions out on the beach and geology sessions out on the beach and gone snorkeling out on the reef. And we'd take the students out, you know, surfing and snorkeling. That's but we also got them reading and writing poetry and doing artistic things, doing, the, doing found object sculptures, beach combing. At night as it was getting dark after dinner, we'd read the students Tim Winton's book, Blueback, with its great message about living on the coast and being with the coast and caring and loving the coast and therefore wanting to protect the coast. And the first time I did it, these are, these are university students, they're adult learners, 20 to 30 years old. And it took some courage the first time I did it, you know, to start reading them bedtime stories again. But it's such a great story to read in a location like this. With all of the sights and smells and sounds of the, of the coastline and the ocean. And we'd read it over a couple of nights and half the students would fall asleep you know while I was reading it which was which was fair enough and if they needed to sleep they needed to sleep but lying out here all lined up in their sleeping bags lying on their tarps just listening to those beautiful words in the soft ocean you know just breathing in the distance and of course it's important to learn the names I know the names of every peak on the horizon and all the islands and all the little coves and points along this coastline but it's not as important as just being here and celebrating being on the coast that's what's really at the heart of the matter and i'll never forget those times and i'll never not be grateful for them year after year a different group of students every time but for me, it was returning to Bear Gully. It was part of my annual cycle of life. In the morning, the fox prints her paws in the sand and charts the rim of a night tide where she's worked the flotsam and the jetsam, hunted the broken carapace of a hairy crab, stopped and flipped an abalone shell in anticipation did she, like me, steal a glance to the east? Bishop and Oberon, Verica and Singapore, all in cloud today. But a sunsplash lights up the answers and the glennies, 
and the white sands of the Yanaki Isthmus. The light of the sky just reflecting off the, the wash where the tide's gone out. I've seen uh, three people and two horses and I reckon that might be it. Just pure wild beach. Pure wild beach as far as you can see. Whilst in the foreground, the black basalt reef seems to rise out of the sea and reveal itself again. Good morning, Cormorant and Gull. Good morning, Heron. Staring into your mirror pool, setting your muscles like a snare between the sine curve of the tides. Here we are, all returning to Bear Gully within the maps of our migrations. and me taking days to prick the sphere of my four-brained world. Foggy with its questions and answers, plans and theories. Till I'm ready to be just here and now. As simply this edge place. Estuary is completely different here. It's widened out, there's a nice deep channel. Just seeing if I can spot a hole or something, a little deep water spot in there and uh, drop the line in again. Even though the tide's coming in, I, it takes a bit longer to push up the channel here, so we've got a little bit more leeway. So let's have another quick fish. Oh, look at that. They just about eat it. I mean, I guess you accumulate knowledge in a place gradually. And over the years, I learnt the place's geology and ecology and history. Quite small. Oh, you're beauty. Which is just about the best eating fish in the sea. It's hard to come back down here to Bear Gully and be on my own. I'm just as interested in the place and deeply connected to the, to the landscape. But just that feeling of loss of not being here with your students and being so busy and having so much to do, you know, in just a few days that you're down here. but it's different. It's really different. <laughs> 